Goldman Sachs sees India's growth picking up in 2020. The third largest economy in Asia should rebound in 2020 as global conditions are set to improve, helping India's economic growth to pick up, according to US investment bank Goldman Sachs. The bank's chief economist and head of global economics and markets research Jan Hatsias said the extent of the recovery will likely be modest instead of returning India to the growth rates seen a few years back. As we go into 2020, we think there's a tentative sense of stabilization in the Indian economy, Hatsias told CNBC. In its report last week, Goldman projected India's growth to fall to 5.1% this year from roughly 7% annually in 2017 and 2018. The bank forecasts the country's growth to pick up to 6.4% in 2020. According to Hatsias, an improving global economy and domestic policies such as corporate tax cuts should help to lift economic activity in India. He also said that the country's central bank, the Reserve Bank of India, probably isn't quite done with easing monetary policy yet. We'll see how strong the rebound is. We did see a significant deceleration, will it be able to make that up in 2020 and 2021 to get back to the growth rates that we saw a couple years ago? Hatsias continued, that may be a tall order, but incrementally we do think that growth probably picks up somewhat from here. India to push Japan out of world's top three economies by 2025. India is projected to outpace the UK by the end of the year to become one of the world's top five economies. It will then take it just six more years to overtake Japan as the world's third largest economy, a new study suggests. India's gross domestic product, GDP, is expected to reach $5.9 trillion by 2025, according to the estimates of global consulting firm IHS Market. The forecast plays into Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ambitious plan to make the country a $5 trillion economy in the next five years. Total Indian GDP is forecast to rise from $3.1 trillion in 2019 to $5.9 trillion by 2025, while the size of the Indian consumer market is forecast to increase from $1.9 trillion in 2019 to $3.6 trillion by 2025, the report reckoned. It adds that the country is set to be one of the main drivers of growth in the Asia-Pacific region and will contribute greatly to global GDP growth. However, to enter the ranks of the world's upper-middle-income countries, India has to address several challenges such as reforms to its legal system and labor market and development of its transport and power infrastructure, among other priorities, according to the report. Despite significant achievements in new infrastructure construction during PM Modi's first term, rapid infrastructure development in key sectors such as transport and power infrastructure remain important priorities, as well as reducing the regulatory burden of government red tape, the IHS market analysis reads. Those priorities were highlighted in the latest annual economic survey published by the Indian government earlier this month. The document, set to serve as a roadmap to reach the $5 trillion objective, says that India's growth should be driven by a virtuous cycle of savings, investment and exports. The consultancy stressed that, despite the existing challenges, the country's economic outlook looks positive for Modi's second term with annual economic growth expected to stand at 7% over the 2019-2023 period. India to become $5 trillion economy, doubters are just professional pessimists. Explaining how India can achieve the ambitious target of becoming a $5 trillion economy in the next five years, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has hit out at those who sow the seeds of doubt over the plan. I am confident that we will achieve the goal of $5 trillion economy in five years, but some people ask what is the need for this and why is it being done? This is the section which is called professional pessimists, Modi told Bharatiya Janata Party workers in Varanasi, as cited by local media. It was Modi's first visit to his constituency in Uttar Pradesh state, northern India, since re-election. He also said to beware of the pessimists adding that they bring more problems and troubles than you ever imagined. Larger the size of the economy will be, the larger the prosperity will it bring for the country. Achieving the goal is not such a difficult task, he said. To do so, India has to raise per capita income, 
which will in turn boost purchasing power and the rise of demand, further triggering an expansion in services. Farmers could also contribute to economic success. In his speech on Saturday, Modi said the government is seeking to create an environment for export of agricultural products as it views farmers as exporters and beyond just being producer of food. Earlier this week, India rolled out a roadmap to reach the $5 trillion objective, laid down by the Prime Minister in mid-June. On Friday, Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman presented her maiden union budget to Parliament. In her speech presenting the economic plan for 2019-20, she said the country is set to become a $3 trillion economy by the end of the year, adding that Modi's goal is well within India's capacity. The budget stipulates a continuation of structural reforms and heavy investment in infrastructure and digital economy to make India a $5 trillion economy. One day before the finance minister's speech, the chief economic adviser to the government of India, CEA, presented Economic Survey 2019. The document states that India needs to sustain real GDP growth of 8% to achieve the $5 trillion economy status. Economic growth should be driven by a virtuous cycle of savings, investment and exports, according to the survey. As global economic growth cools down and is expected to grow at the slowest pace in three years this year, 2.6%, India remains one of the fastest growing economies in the world. According to Nasdaq analysts, it is in the top five, and is expected to grow at 7.4% till 2021. It also boasts the status of world's third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity and seventh largest in terms of nominal GDP. India and Russia will use their national currencies for defense deals to bypass U.S. sanctions report. Home Business News India and Russia will use their national currencies for defense deals to bypass U.S. sanctions report. July 15, 2019 1245. Get short URL. India and Russia will use their national currencies for defense deals to bypass U.S. sanctions report. File photo Camel Riders of India's Paramilitary Border Security Force Copyright Reuters. 6154. Follow RT on RT. Russia and one of the biggest importers of its weapons, India have decided to use their national currencies to transfer payments for massive defense deals in order to skirt possible U.S. sanctions, according to Bloomberg. Moscow and New Delhi have been boosting their arms trade in recent months, with Russia selling submarines, ships, tanks and jets to its Indian partners and set to supply S-400 air defense systems to the country. India's procurement of S-400S, with a contract worth more than $5 billion, has triggered anger from one of the its largest trade partners, the US, which has warned India of possible consequences of the move. The new payment method through the ruble and the rupee, agreed by the central banks of Russia and India, may avoid Washington's sanctions threat. It would enable India to make the first payment for two warships built by Russia, Bloomberg said, citing sources. It is not clear what vessels were implicated in this but last year the two parties inked a deal for four Russian-guided missile frigates for the Indian Navy, two of which are being built in Russia's Kaliningrad region. India's multi-billion arms deals with Russia could put it at risk of being sanctioned by Washington using the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, COTSA. The law mandates U.S. penalties against entities engaging in significant transactions with Russia's defense sector companies, such as main official arms exporter Rosabaron Export. New Delhi is not the only one willing to purchase Russian arms at the risk of U.S. punitive measures. Washington's NATO ally Turkey has defied the threat of U.S. sanctions, by going ahead with the purchase of Russia's S-400 air defense system. Ankara has already received several batches of S-400 components, and the last plane with parts landed in Turkey on Monday. While the Pentagon has, so far, remained silent on the matter, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan believes the U.S. will refrain from targeting Ankara with sanctions as President Trump has the authority to waive or postpone Katsa.